first time in nine years. That tells the story, folks. Done a little bit of everything to get this program up and get it going the right way. It takes time to build a culture, and they're doing just that. She's joined on the coaching staff by Elisa Post as associate head coach and assistant coach Andrew Perchick. All right, we're underway here. It's tournament time. Both teams will look to possess things. One thing that Coach Burr, when I was talking to him on the phone yesterday, mentions that he expects both teams to be a little bit more attack-minded than they were in the first matchup. And, and I think that's safe to say. With a 0-0 tie, you know, at that time, it seems way back when, but on September 29th, when the two teams met during the regular season here at Snyderfield, you know, Wofford was just suffering some of the first injuries of the year. As Mapplebeck has this hit off of her, let's see if they corner kick. Indeed, it will be a corner kick here in the first minute. Tense time as it was Sanford that scored in the first minute just a couple of days ago off of the corner kick in the first minute. So obviously something that you expect the Terriers to defend a little bit differently here from the outset. With Goyla, the sophomore from Delray Beach, Florida, set to take the corner kick for the Paladins. Tremendous crowd here at Snyder Field for this first round matchup. Nice ball played in the box. Gonna be able to get a head on. Knocked out defensively by the Terriers. Great positioning. We'll have to take a look at that again in a minute and on the replay, but that could have been going in. At first I thought it was going wide, but great job defensively by the Terriers to keep that out of the back of the net. It's Ellie Zalde on ball. Nice ball played in, trying to test this Furman defense early. Gets it back to Sampson. Gaither working around. As we mentioned, very, very crafty with the ball. Kelly unable to dispossess. This goes out of play. Taking a look at the corner. Got a lot of power on that, did Gaither. And that was Reichenbach that was able to take it off the line. Again, it looked to be going wide at first, but was gonna sneak in, I think, without the efforts of Reichenbach. Herman working around in the back. So you've seen exactly what we kind of segued into from the beginning that expect both teams to be a little bit more attack minded. That attack continuing right here for the Paladins, but that goes out of play. As Doss will take the goal kick for the Terriers. Could go out of play for a firm and throw in. We Wofford throw in this time. Marlott to throw it in. Ellie Zalde unable to collect the ball. So a lot of back and forth right now, but on the Wofford defensive side of things. Another corner kick opportunity here for the Paladins in the early going. Furman coming off a 1-1 tie against SoCon regular season champion Chattanooga along with Sanford. Both Walford and Furman face the co-regular season champions in their final matchups of the regular season entering the tournament. All played into the box, lifted in again. Furman able to get ahead on it, but Walford able to get it out of danger, and it'll be a goal kick. Childress knocks it off, a Paladin. Already been an entertaining game. Love all the signage that the SoCon has brought in for this matchup. 
really enhances the championship experience for all of the student athletes. So Count does a great job with all of their championships. Close to being a handball, but instead will be a throw in. As Mapplebeck will throw it in for Walford. Booker gets it into the middle. Kelly looking to switch fields. Kelly's all day. Decided to try to test the goalkeeper, but it was blocked. And why not, particularly when he scored two goals in the last two games? Reichenbach. Guest in the middle. Continues to have the ball at her feet. Gonna try to get something out of it, and she does. It'll be the first corner kick of the day for the Terriers. 79th corner kick of the year for Walford. Two to one corner advantage very early for Furman. That kind of tells the story. It's been a lot of back and forth as we alluded to. We're only in the seventh minute. Booker plays this into the box. Sam's gonna have to get a hand on it. The one she'd like to have back right there. But good job by Samson just to get a hand on it and knock it away defensively. Look at it here. Booker with a nice ball played in. Kelly may have gotten there if Samson wouldn't have got her hand on it, but good job by the goalkeeper. You see the 5'8 senior from Atlanta, Georgia. Looks like it's a terrier this down. Yeah, it's guest. With a box-to-box -box midfielder, somebody that does a little bit of everything, does the senior from Kingsport, Tennessee. If you're a Walford fan, that's not what you want to see right now. A name you don't say a lot on the broadcast, but somebody that does a little bit of everything for Walford, that does the captain. In fact, Coach Grant says that if you asked her to compartmentalize in one person the culture that they're trying to build, it would be Mackenzie Guest. Guest is gonna have to depart tough for the senior. Sampson's gonna get it back in play here in the eighth minute. Booker. It was Sydney Sohn that came in for the injured guest. Sohn, a freshman from Hoover, Alabama. Nice win by Ellie Zalde. Working around a Booker. Booker trying to be that nuisance, the great nuisance, as we like to say. Always pestering opposing defenses. Nice bit of speed. But Walford able to intercept with some stepping up. Ali Zaldo, who's all day looking for the through ball. Booker finding Sone again. Sone quickly into the action. Looking for the off run, but nobody there. Mapplebeck unable to win this one. Gaither trying to get the ball, able to do just that. Good help defense for the Terriers. Played in. Will it skip all the way to Childress? And it will. Childress looking to get a shot in. Is blocked away, though. Unable to find separation. Kelly offsides, though. 
First offside of the game, she take a look at it here. Ball skips off right to Childress. Childress trying to get an opening, but stellar defense. See Childress, a sophomore from Alpharetta. Furman working around in the back. This one's gonna go out of bounds, right in front of the wall for bench. This is a six matchup between Furman and Walford in the postseason with Furman five and oh in those matchups. Obviously something that Coach Grant and the Terriers have talked about trying to change here tonight. Gaither showing what she can do. This one hits off Ross, good positioning by Ross to step up, knowing the ball was gonna have to be crossed because she didn't really have any room to operate. Mascara looking for Gaither, Gaither. No foul called. Furman keeps it though. Gaither continues to be a little bit of everywhere, but you can tell when she gets the ball, Walford's gonna collapse quickly. They know the scouting report. Walford switches fields. Childress looking to find a little room of her own. Able to do just that. Can Booker get there? She can't. Good job by Ben Goff just to get that out of play. Mapplebeck will throw this ball in. Doug King from the SoCon office. Passes it to her, does a little bit of everything himself. Send to Booker. Drops it off Childress. Childress is going to take this shot. Right idea. Samson able to bring it in though. Good, did a good job of making sure that didn't spill out. Looked like she had a little bit of a tough grab at first, but able to make sure to bring it in as Booker lays it off perfectly. Childress had some room. You see it right here. If, if that would have spilled out, Ellie Zade may have made it three goals in three games. That goes out of play. Bullet to throw it in. Asheville High School. Just up the road in Asheville, North Carolina. That's where she played her prep career. Marlett looking to be a little bit more direct here. And Coach Burr was exactly right. This is a much more attack focused game than the first time these two teams met on September 29th. Seems like a lifetime ago. In fact, it was just the third game of the conference season for Walford. Foul called. Second foul on Walford today. Just had two fouls so far here in 13, almost 13 minutes played. Furman gonna loft this into the box. Great ball played in Gaither. Had an opening, but not enough room to really put a power behind that header. Nice ball, a nice job to find the separation. You look at it right here, exactly what you want but Gaither doesn't really have any room to put any power on that shot, and you're not gonna beat Doss with that shot. One of those things that you always hear about, but it's easier to see when you have examples like that. Defending a lot of times in soccer isn't knocking the ball away, it's just being in the right position. Bullock able to keep it in, Childress. 
Trying to get the ball back for the Terriers. Wofford trying to pin the Paladins in. And they are able to do just that. Thought Booker was going to go in on the th through ball, but decided to make an outside run. I guess an inside outside run, you would call that in that situation. Not a true split out, but Gaither. No secret what Furman's trying to do with Gaither, try to give her the ball and let her go to work. Appleback able to get the ball, good step. Use football parlance. Nice job jumping the route. Kelly. Zone. So it's a good, great job since coming in for the injured guest. Take a look at it again. Nice head of steam, three pound and zoner. There was gonna be something that happened right there. And it's gonna be Walford that's gonna get the opportunity on this set piece for Maul to try to lift it in the box, see if the Terriers can make anything happen here in the 16th minute. Nice ball played, short in the box. Gonna have a chance for a shot. Kelly, still not out of danger. Booker on ball, crosses it back into the middle. Furman able to get it out though. Tense moments, Roth. Gets it back to Abigail McKenzie. McKenzie and Roth playing a two-man game right now. Childress continues to put in that high work rate. Able to win this ball, crosses it in the box. And a nice ball, Booker almost able to get there for the flick, but instead of Sampson that brings it in. But a strong couple of minutes here. Childress did this on her own, really nice solo effort to try to make something out of nothing. And you see Kelly applauding her for her work rate. Booker, Reichenbach. Nice cut in. Gonna pass this ball, that's gonna be a goal! And it's gonna be Wofford that takes the early one nothing lead. They had been pressing and beautifully executed and it's one nothing Walford. Reichenbach looking up, looks like she's gonna take the shot. Sees Childers right there, plays it in, Childers does the rest. Slots in the lower left corner and it's one nothing Walford. Tremendous execution. We had just noted that it was Walford that, uh, that kept going, kept going, kept pressing. That high work rate led to that goal. First goal of the season for Megan Childers in the 17th minute. Now has four points on the year. She also has two assists. And if you've watched Walford play, that's not something you would say. Childress is so involved that those numbers would seem a little bit low, but she just does a little bit of everything for the Terriers. Furman trying to get back in the game quickly. A beautiful ball played in the box, and that was close to being 1-1 less than a minute later. Nice roll. That, everything was perfect on that except just missed the header. A little bit late on the run. Istos is going to have this for a goal kick here in the 17th minute. Abigail McKenzie. Furman getting it to Gaither. Gaither working it back. Gutierrez goes back. That'll be Ben Goff. Back to Ben Goff. Booker going to be able to get there. She's going to be one on one. Does she have the room? Does she get it in? And she does. And it's two to nothing on the cheeky chip from Booker. What? 
a past minute and a half, two minutes for these Terriers. Again, it's been off of that high work rate, third goal of the season. You see there for Booker, it's just been Wofford continuing to press defensively, continuing to press. Booker could have tried to take it, but she saw what Samson was doing and decided to go with the cheeky chip, and it's 2-0 in favor of Wofford. About as fun as a two- or three-minute stretch as Wofford's had all year. And again, it all starts with the defense. It's been defense to offense. And that high work rate, what Wofford does has been leading to these goals. And Furman, who started off incredibly well in this game in the first five, ten minutes, really kind of trying to make something happen. But Wofford withstood and has been able to, over these next ten minutes and really over the last five minutes, they've completely controlled the run of play. And here they go leading two to nothing. Mapplebeck. Furman able to keep it in. That's Goyla. But don't count these Paladins out the way they play. This is definitely a Furman team that has the ability to come back in this matchup. But one of the biggest things you're going to have to offset is the confidence of Walford. You can see it. It's not just building, it's actualized. Over the last five minutes, they've really done about everything right. As Doss gets the ball back here in the 20th minute. We kind of highlighted at the beginning with Brian in the graphics department with our players to watch. What Doss has done, and that's what makes what Furman's two goal disadvantage even tougher. So when you got Doss and Nett, she's very good between the pipes. Seven shutouts leads the SOCON. And again, not saying that it can't happen for Furman. What I'm saying is that there's many variables that come into that. position that the Paladins really haven't been in. Really, for these Paladins, they're so young. This is a position that the majority of their players really haven't been in at all. Both of these teams incredibly young. Walford with 20 underclassmen. Ball played over the top, trying to catch the streaking run. Run never made, but Furman able to stop it. But right now, it'll be Reichenbach looking for Booker. Booker decides to pull up, pulls it back, goes out wide left. Gets it to this zone. Ellie's all day. Had a beautiful goal in the Chattanooga win. Did Ellie's all day. Also had the penalty kick goal and the only goal of the game in the 2 1 loss to co regular season champion Sanford. It'll be Furman with some substitutions. Coming in is Madison Luckett, the sophomore from Asheville, North Carolina, T.C. Robertson. Offer gets the ball in the middle of the field. It'll be Kelly. Cameron Whitaker also came in for the Paladins. Whitaker out of Greenville Tech Charter in Greenville. So Coach Bird trying to make something happen with this team. Down 2-0, these Paladins keep looking to be on the front foot though. Ball going out of play kind of leads to a point that Coach Purr mentioned when we were on the phone the other day. Just noticed that the league was so good this year that really one through nine, anything can happen. And a lot of that could be said pretty self-evident with the fact that 
Wofford beat Chattanooga just this past weekend. Wofford finished eight in the league standings and beat the number one seed. It's a good women's soccer league. Pretty much every coach to a person has said that as I've talked to them throughout the year as Furman takes this corner kick. Nice header, Doss, can they keep it out? Indeed they do, it slams off of Roth, but she doesn't care, it goes out of play. Be interesting to see this replay. We take a look at it again. Furman's been really good on the balls play of the box. This one just headed out by Kelly. Kelly slams it off her teammate. I shouldn't laugh because that hurts, but it's just not something that you expect. And it looks like Furman has a player down as well. Athletic trainer is going to come out and check on her. Roth looks no worse for wear. And most importantly for Wofford, the ball was kept out of the net. But you have to be very complimentary of the service provided on the corner kicks here tonight for Furman. They've been able to score off of those corner kicks, but all three balls played in the box have been beautiful. Wofford, last time scoring two goals in the first half, September 24th, 2021, at home against Furman. Is that a good omen? Could be, should be. Great job by Brian and the history department. Getting that ready for you to see right there. Again, it's been a historic year for this Wofford women's soccer program. They, you know, they've had better years, but this is a culture changing year, a year that in the history of the program just kind of sets the table for going forward. At least that's their hope. When you got 20 underclassmen, 11 sophomores, nine freshmen as Furman going to have to make another change right now. Been a little bit of a war of attrition for them. That's Hannah Farr. Farr, such a valuable component to the Paladins. It's going to be Julia Nicholas that's going to replace her, the senior from Atlanta, Georgia. Hate to see it. Farr, particularly the first time these two team plays, the two team play, excuse me, she was very, very much in the game. She was really the one of the biggest antagonists. Paladins weren't able to score, as were the Wofford as well, but at the same time, far a big part of that game. This is play. And I guess going back to what I was saying a minute ago, she was an antagonist if you were a Wofford fan, obviously. If you're a Furman fan, it's exactly what you wanted her to be. I was just thinking over my verbiage. As Kelly wins this, gets it out to Ellie's all day. Booker. Reichenbach threatens the shot, decides to pull up. Working the ball around. Wofford continues to press, but great job by Furman. Roth gets it back to Doss. Furman able to get in the middle, but Wofford collects quickly. Appleback just possessed by Luckett, but then wins it back herself. Furman continues to press Gaither with a dummy. Ball played in, this just goes back. I think that was a cross, but in the end it came close to scoring for the Paladins. Take a look at it right. The way she came around it, it looked like she was trying to find Luckett, but if it would have gone in, it would have been a shot and a goal. 25 minutes played, and half number one is Wofford leading two to nothing. Both teams have had four shots, but it's the goal with two of those.
four by Wofford, on frame three by Furman. It's the goals by Childress and Booker, though, that are the difference. Childress did a great job just finishing off a strong attacking sequence for the Terriers and sliding to the lower left corner as the foul's called on Wofford. It was Booker, though, with the cheeky chip on the one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. Furman looking to change the complexion of the game, starting with this set piece. Haven't played badly, but find themselves down two to nothing. Lifted into the box, a nice win by Kelly. Go, well, able to keep it in. Nice run from Robertson. Furman with a little bit of room on the right side. Has some room to manage. Looking for the pass. Unable to pick it out as Walford stands tall. Booker holds up play. And Walford commits more numbers for and Switch the point of attack. It's Childress, one of the goal scorers with the ball. Going to move more inside. Good setup by Childress. Able to get it in the middle. Reichenbach. Reichenbach gets it to Booker. Childress gets it out for a corner kick, though. Childress continues to excel on that right side. Kind of an awkward situation, ball just caromed off. It'll be Mapple back though. With the second corner kick of the day for Walford. Furman has three so far. Nice ball played in. Maybe a little long, nobody there. Kelly's gonna be able to keep it in though. But Furman starts going the other way. He'll put back into play very, very quickly. Furman continues to work it around in the back. Bullock. Nice ball played to the left side. Looks like Nicholas able to get there. Pulls it back up, gets it back to Bullock. Bullock gonna kick it in with the left foot, but this will be right at Doss. Not the cross that Bullock was looking for. If you're just joining us, it was the Citadel that was able to pick up the three nothing win in the first game of the SOCON tournament, already advancing to the quarterfinals. Well, they'll face off against Sanford, continuing to prove what we were talking about earlier, that the SOCON is wide open in this tournament, as it was the Citadel as the seventh seed that knocked off Sanford, co-regular season champion, one nothing earlier this season. Walford, the eighth seed, just a few days ago, beat the number one seed, Chattanooga, two to nothing here at Snyder Field. It's gonna be a fun, next week and a half. Diaz gets it back. Well, I thought it was going to Samson, but gonna go even further. Still firm is gonna be able to get there. Miller. Bullock tries to run down the line, but instead it'll be go out for a throw in. Just about 15 minutes left here in the opening half of play. Here we go, here we go, here we go. 
Booker. Nice moves from McCaffrey, but Furman able to take it away. McCaffrey, a beautiful goal herself against Chattanooga. Nice job by Nicholas to keep the ball. Gets it into the middle. There's a Furman team that has used substitutions a lot more than the past. Coach Burr told me earlier this year that, you know, they just feel that's the way the game's going as Doss brings this in, trying to use it to their advantage. There's a couple teams, Mercer, Sanford, obviously a little bit of everybody, but those two particularly utilize that. As you see, Gaither, 2021 SOCON Office Player of the Year. Booker passes it off to McCaffrey, but unable to collect. That allows Furman to push the pace. But Marlett takes the ball away. Guest over there wrapped up. And not exactly what you want to see. Hopefully able to get worked on. And if Furman, I mean, excuse me, if Wofford's able to get the win, then obviously you hope she'll be back in it. Don't want to see that for the senior. Such a big part of this program, as you see Poplin coming in. Two time all SOCON choice. Just made her first start of the year last Sunday at VMI. So it kind of tells you the story of the year when you got that type of talent that hadn't been able to play for much of the year. Unfortunately, it, a little bit of hard luck for the Paladins. Not so hard luck right now for Wofford at Winthrop with the Terriers up one nothing over the Eagles on a Jackson Robo goal in the 28th minute. Jackson Robles had some beautiful goals this year. Didn't see that one. Be interested to see how that one, whether it just matters how it goes in or not, but Roe can look back to a few good goals this year for Robo. Furman. Dispossessed from Kelly. Bureau now in the game. Tries to play it down the sideline. It goes out of bound. Ellie Johnson in for Furman as well. Over the last couple minutes. Back to the Walford men. You saw they were up one nothing. That's their final away game of the regular season. Close out their SoCon season and the regular season. 7 p.m. here at Schneider Field on Saturday, October 29th. It'll be senior night against nationally ranked UNCG. A very good UNCG program. A UNCG program that, like Walford, has beat Clemson this year. Walford able to do it in the preseason while UNCG. Did it just a couple weeks ago in the regular season. So it should be a very entertaining matchup as Doss set to put this into play. Foul call. Put in quickly by Marlett. Gets it back to Abigail McKenzie. Out to Roth in the middle. Walford working around. Mapplebeck. Able to find Bureau. Sohn. Gets it out wide left. 
Ball goes out of play, it'll be a throw in. Look at it right here. Nice defense from the Paladins. Leanna Guion now into the game for Wofford. She replaced Reichenbach, who had a nice shift, including the assist on the Childress goal. So that goes out of play for a corner kick. It'll be Guion that takes the corner kick. It looks like, nope, she's going to leave it. So they're going to stop the clock. I guess they thought Wofford was taking too much time as Haley McCaffrey goes over. Haley McCaffrey just decided she's going to take it. Arm goes up, she should be lofted into the box. Instead, goes short. I like that idea. As this will be corner kick number three, excuse me, probably number four now, two in a row. And indeed it is. Ball played in, nice ball. That, ooh, that was close to being number three. Folks, that was by design. You look at it right here. Goes short. Beautiful ball. The back-to-back -back sequences were by design, to be honest with you. Trying to catch them off guard, and it does, and that'll be corner kick number five here. As Mappelbeck will play this in on the end swinger. And swinging ball just misses. Kelly trying to get there. McCaffrey. Goes back to Kelly. Kelly offsides for the second time tonight herself. Be Sampson to put it back into play here in the 38th minute first round matchup we'll talk more about it at halftime but a lot of things can happen in the SOCON championship over the next week and a half Steiner dispossessed Goes all the way back, continue to pressure Sampson. Walford in full attack mode right now. Bureau. Abigail McKenzie. Keon trying to Turn in. Just misses Haley Ross' hand. Ball played to Mappleback. He's going to play it in with that right foot. Steiner unable to pick it up. Karim's offer though, but it'll go right to Sampson. Sampson kicks it here in the 40th minute. Round one of the SOCON Women's Soccer Championship. As Kelly brings this down. Nice touch. Robertson throws it in. Looks like we're going to have a, a bunch of substitutes here in just a second for the Paladins. Al Johnson. Able to get a bullet. 
the Bureau working hard for the Terriers. Gion lets it roll. Ball gonna go out. Guess we're gonna have a couple substitutions here for the Terriers as well. We'll get you the multitude of substitutes here in just a second. out of play again unable to pick it up Gion continues to work hard the Simpsonville South Carolina native put in a high work rate here put in a nice little shift it was Millie Murphy that just came in just a second ago from Applebeck for the Terriers, also coming in were Stella Garcia and Julie Galley for the Paladins. It's Gaither looking for the run, decides to pull up, trying to go herself. That was Murphy that had it, but it goes out of play. Just misses. Gaither. Gaither was in a good position, but they put too much weight on the pass, and it'll go out of play. Coming up at halftime, we got a score update on the Wofford men's soccer game. It was Wofford up 1 nothing just a minute ago over the Eagles of Winthrop in Rock Hill, South Carolina. We also have a recap of 7th seed of the Citadel win over 10th seeded VMI in the first half highlights and stats. Make sure you stick around and join us. Ball's going to go out of play. It'll be a goal kick for Doss. Here in the 44th minute, under two minutes remaining before intermission. You see Doss. Junior goalkeeper, 5'8", from Greensboro, North Carolina. Entered today, having played over 1,500 minutes, 1,567 to be exact. Bullock. We wall for ball. Galley thought it was actually giving it back to Furman now. Bullet to throw it in. Tight shot by Chalmers gives you a good look. Just about 30 seconds remaining here in the opening half. That'll probably do it here in the first half. Neither team really looking to mount anything in the final seconds of the first half as Byron Rucker counts down the seconds. And that'll do it in half number one. What a half for the Terriers. Goals by Booker.
and Childress are the difference. It's Wofford, two, Furman, zero at the halftime break. We'll be back to talk about the first half. Look forward to the second half and way much more for SOCON tournament action here at the table crew and everybody doing a great job as Gutierrez set to get things started with the whistle by the head official. And here we go. We're underway. Booker looks to close quickly. Kelly gets it outside to Childress, one of the goal scorers. Childress and Booker each with a goal. So this goes out of play. Gaither definitely will try to insert herself into this match a lot more in the second half. And I guess I should take that back and say it, it wasn't for lack of not trying in the first half, but Wofford did a great job of bottling her up. But Gaither can make magic quickly, has that type of ability. As Mapplebeck set to throw it in. Children are still on ball. Somehow that ball gets back to Childress. Childress trying to get the ball back herself, and she does. Just missed on the pass to Booker. Booker collects, or excuse me, Kelly collects, gets it to Booker. Kelly Skip touch, opens her up to cross it in just a little high though. Zone. Reichenbach. We throw in for the Terriers on the side. Booker inside the box looking to turn. Should go out for a corner kick. Indeed, it will be corner kick number six for Wofford. Doubling up Furman. And Furman, if I remember right, it was either three to one or three to nothing at one point in corner kicks, but Wofford been pushing the pace. Nice ball playing the box with Sampson. Good understanding, able to collect. Zone again, really done a great job taking over for Guest. If you didn't join us at halftime or stepped away, Guest was, as Booker makes the front, crosses it in, Reichenbach can't get there. Good idea. Going back to the point though, Guest was working around at halftime, getting some touches in, doing some movements. Good to see if you're a Wofford fan as you look at Reichenbach, the senior from Invergroves Heights, Minnesota. Still on the right, gonna be able to get, can they get enough on the touch? Ball is a little behind. It's been all Wofford here in the first few minutes of the second half. But Furman, as you can see, looking to change that thought process. Trying to ask some questions of this Wofford defense. And they may do it right here. Nothing called though. Abigail McKenzie look back to make sure. Good look. Great job by Caroline and the replay crew to show that.
Gaither on ball, looking to turn. Roth knows she's got to stand her up, hold her ground. But Gaither can do just that, and wow. We talked about it, folks. Doss is great on reactive saves, and that's another one to add to the highlight reel. Look at it right here, Gaither. Roth did a fantastic job holding her up, but Gaither just found enough room, curled in. That's one that usually goes in for Gaither, but Doss, having the presence of mind to still parry it over the top is uh, impressive. And that's why she has seven shutouts on the year. Might not end up that way tonight as Furman keeps pressing on that regard. And that's not what she's worried about. She just wants to keep it out of the back of the net. This one goes out of play. Good luck at Ben Goff, the freshman from Charlotte, North Carolina. Caroline Doss. We'll take a look at it again. The player to watch before the game started. Seven shutouts this season. First in the SoCon. Had as good of a save that I've ever seen in the Sanford match the other day on a reaction save. I guess we could probably say that all day. Production crew would probably say that I've said that every game, but it's true. She has one of those types of saves. But that's the one that's fresh in my mind. But this one's now fresh in my mind. That was really strong. This one in for a foul, and it'll be a set piece opportunity. Good news if you're a Wofford fan in the 22nd, or excuse me, in the 52nd minute is Wofford 2, Winthrop 0. Ruel adding to Robles tally to make it 2 to nothing. This is a Winthrop team that's been playing really, really good right now as well. This will be a nice win for the Terriers, looking to end things strongly. Beautiful ball played in, just couldn't get there though. Could the Paladins. Again, highly effective ball played in by Furman, but just can't connect, can't have that finished product as of right now. But the service has been elite tonight from the Paladins. Going back to that two nothing lead for the Terrier men at Winthrop. Again, can't say it enough. Make sure to come out. It's the 11th ranked team in the country as Booker onto this ball and UNCG that's coming this way. Booker's trying to add to this though. Still on the ball. Somehow, somehow. Ellie's all day dispossessed. Diaz. Roth will be able to get there. Das Boots the other way. Foul called on the Terriers. Fifth foul of the day issued against Wofford. Just a seventh foul overall. Just two fouls issued to the Paladins so far in the 53rd minute. Ball played just over the SoCon logo. Ball lifted into the box. Can Furman make something happen here? Mapplebeck gets her leg in though. Tremendous defense for the Terriers. Mapplebeck's probably gonna be down, if I would imagine. I was interested to see if that was gonna be the case. As you would expect from any great defender, she looked up to see if everything was okay, but she was grimacing. Mapplebeck always gives her all in each game, we always talk about her high work rate and what she's willing to do. All right now, maybe I can finish my UNCG point about the Wofford men. When we were talking about it, it's UNCG Wofford on Saturday for senior night here. And UNCG moved up to 11th in the country. So Wofford men playing really strong soccer with a chance to and knock off a team looking for a title of their own in UNCG. Huge matchup here. Ball for gonna get the ball to get things started back. Berman keeps it on Walford side. Gaither just 
I was about to say, I would be surprised if they didn't call foul. Referee was trying to play for the advantage. Are they gonna give a card for this one? No, just to talk to Kelly. You look at it right here, Gaither has a little bit of room. I don't think Kelly was trying to do anything other than get the ball and good job by the official. Again, that's easier said than done. Tremendous opportunity for the Paladins to change the complexion of this game if they can find the back of the net here. Tremendous opportunity on this set piece. Can they score over the bar? Always was going over with the way that she shot that ball, unfortunately for Mascara, freshman from Mount Pleasant. Didn't do a good job of getting over, was always under it. You take a look at it right here, sets up her body. And you can see she knows that she didn't get over that ball enough, got too much under it. And that's so easy to do. Especially in the 54th minute when you've exerted so much energy, trying to make sure that you keep your body over the ball and strike it well is so much, so hard to do. Got a lot more physical over the last few minutes as this ball's played into Childress. Childress with a nice turn. Gonna have a chance to take the shot. Can she finish it off? Great shot, struck it well, but it was right at Sampson. That was a nice little dummy to herself. Beautiful ball played in, nice job faking it right there. She was gonna be able to connect, strikes it well, but right at Sampson. Another foul called. Furman's gonna have another set piece. As Robertson comes over, kicks it out wide left. Booker. Ellie's all day. Looks to switch the point of attack. Reichenbach gets it back to Ellie Zalde. Gonna take one of her own. Not a bad idea. Not enough pace on it, but hit it well. That would have been top shelf, but just didn't have enough pace behind the shot. Herman trying to make something happen. It's been all Furman over the last two or three minutes, but can't find the back of the net in their story of the night. Childress able to win the ball back. I think they called that against the Terriers. Just that little arm. The first time she went around cleanly, but just putting that arm back, even if you don't touch them, a lot of times the officials are gonna call that just for seeing the movement. Just like you watch in a lot of sports, there's always those things that even if nothing happens, you know they're still gonna call that. It's gonna be Furman though, with another set piece opportunity off of the bullet. Cross and this is just gonna go out of play. Or Marlett just, making sure that it wasn't gonna go out for a corner kick. I don't know if that touched anybody, but she was just being sure. Gaither, unable to turn. Booker holding the play up, now using her pace. She's got Childress with her, but I don't know if Childress gonna be able to get there, and then she does again. Goes out of play though. That was a good job by Childress just to even somewhat get to that ball. A 
run in here for Furman. Can they finish? No, Toss again with a beautiful save. Not out of danger yet, though. Marlott's going to have to clear it. Again, Doss stands on her head. Furman elects to play it out wide right. Ball played in, should be able to be picked up by Doss, just claims it off. Thought that didn't have as much as it did on it, but Doss somehow gets a hand on it. And again, Walford somehow keeps it out of the back of the net. Booker fouled. Just a third foul of the day issued against the foul. Let's go back to it. Mascara with the shot, and Doss just makes herself big. Does a great job, and then it was an even better job afterwards, or not a better job, equally as strong job of somehow keeping this out. And it was very close to Murphy, maybe handballing that one, but just to the side. Ellie's all day looking for the <laughs> just lifts it up. You can see the confidence building among these Terriers. Furman seeing the same thing, just puts it out of the play to collect their shape in the 60th minute. Man, this has been fun. Exactly what we expected in a first round SOCON tournament matchup. Booker. Ellie Zalde trying to make something happen. Instead, it'll be a throw in. Marlott leaves it for Ellie's all day. <laughs> Kelly's going to take a shot of her own. Didn't miss by much. Hit that incredibly well. Leaned back a little bit too much, but got over it pretty well. See, now it's. 11 to eight in shots, seven and four on shots on goal. Except for the last two minutes, it's really been all firm in here over the last seven to eight minutes. I guess it, looking at it wholly, it's been a pretty equal here in the second half, but it, because they've had spurts where it was one of the others, you look at it, six saves, zero goals allowed so far for Doth. Two huge saves. And a third where she just got her hand on it. Doesn't go down as a save, but if she doesn't get a hand on it, that might have been the first goal of the night for the Paladins. Nice ball again. Can Gaither turn on this? Unable to do so. Again, I can't say it enough. The service tonight has been spectacular from the Paladins. They just can't find the back of the net. Sachi Bureau coming in now for the Terriers. It's Doss pointing to her teammates to make sure they're in the right position. Now over 1,600 minutes on the year played between the pipes. Booker. Bureau. Just misses on the pass to Sohn. Kelly gets it to Sohn though. Sohn with a little bit of room. Gonna take a shot of her own. Can't she get there? Just goes a little high. Again, Walford continuing to force issue. Go on the front foot. Sohn gets over it pretty well, lost it. Didn't miss by much. I thought that was about to hit the crossbar, to be honest with you. So now to Hoover, Alabama, as we mentioned, the freshman.
Ball played in. This is going to go out for another corner kick as Bureau's pass. She's just trying to pick out someone. Had a couple substitutions for the Paladins. Just a minute ago, it's Galley and Nicholas back in. Be corner kick number seven for the Terriers is Marlett, the junior from Orlando, Florida. Gonna play this in, in swinger. Sampson gets a hand on it. Ellie's all day. Ooh, Kelly, if Kelly would have been stepping the right way, that may have been another goal. Reichenbach gonna go herself. Sampson able to gobble it up though. Sampson's been really strong today as well. Obviously has the two goals given up. But still has made a ton of nice saves. For the Paladins, three on the night. Murphy just plays it out. Bullet to throw it in. Piero keep trying to keep it away though. Trying not to give Gaither an inch. It's gonna be out for a corner kick. Looks like it's gonna be Gutierrez. Sixty fifth minute. Offered clinging to a two nothing advantage. Ball played in. Bureau gets it out of play. Offered with a chance to collect their shape. Got another score update for you from Rock Hill. Give it to you. Just a second there, you see it. Jacob James cuts the Terrier advantage in half at two to one in the 66 minute. You see 68, 30 about. Just a little bit ahead of this one, so we should be able to give you a final score. Highly entertaining non-conference game late in the season. Gaither looking for the run down the side. Scally tries to get there, but it goes out of play. Doss gonna pick up one of the balls. What a stat. Over the last seven games, 34 saves for Doss, six tonight, only eight goals against. You gotta believe Doss will figure into the all SoCon team somewhere, if not at the top. There's a lot of good goalkeepers in this league, though. That ball goes out of play. But only one goalkeeper can say they lead the league in shutouts. That's the one about to kiss, kick the ball right now. Into the lineup for the Paladins. But that's a, always the most... Out. Fun thing, I work at a conference office for my day job, and it's always the hardest and the most fun thing. So many good players, and only so many can be on all conference teams. So this ball goes out of play. The coaches vote, obviously, but they think the same thing. There's only so many that can fit into those spots. 
And they got quite a decision on many things here in the SOCON this year with so much high quality play. And a high quality play right there gets it out of play and going the other way for the Terriers. But Furman gets it quickly back the other way, but thinking the player was in bounds was actually out of bounds. That's why they tell them to put on the pennies. As you can see as the long sleeve shirts have found their way onto the players, it's getting a little chilly here. As it always does since we're in the part of the year with four seasons in one day. Bureau trying to find Reichenbach. Most nice movement from Ben Goff. Defensively for Furman. Just like the Terriers, this is a Furman team with so much use that's got a lot of good soccer ahead of them over the next few years. Sampson picks it up. Mappleback back in the game. Good to see you if you're a Walford fan or good to see you in general for either team because when she went down in the box trying to save a goal. Bullet to throw it in. Offered continues to be strong defensively. Dion. Quickly going the other way, looking for the off run. To say that she was offside as Ellie's all day, though. Probably the right call, just a smidge offside. Goes out of play. Doug King slashes it to Marlett. Marlett going to throw it in. Dion. Gutierrez on ball. Again, just going to go out of play. That's one of the things that Coach Burr mentioned when we were on the phone yesterday that, you know, he has a team that sometimes is being more consistent within a game, within a game, that they just have had great spurts where they look fantastic as we've seen here tonight and then they have other times where they just look like a different team and that's one of the things he's been working on but it's been a little different than he's used to but that's where they are right now and this is even with under 20 minutes to play it's only a two goal lead for Walford it doesn't seem insurmountable with the way that Furman's played at point but they got to get it going here Nicholas plays it in. Just can't connect though. Ken Fisher. Got another score update for you. And if you're a Wofford fan, a good one. Thaddeus Dennis. SoCon Offensive Player of the Week recently. It just a kid that gives everything every time he steps on to the pitch. Good to see him finding the back of the net once again. 3-1 Wofford with under 20 minutes left. men's program at Walford that here there they could have four or five more wins Samson though maybe giving up a goal right here we'll see can she Keon get this in again you don't teach this but Bureau should have gone down knowing that the goalkeeper had grabbed her 
or trying to save the ball, that she may have gone down in that situation. Again, that's not something you want to teach, but it's just understanding. Because you're taught to play through contact, but when you get contact, understanding of where you are in the game. And I say that and back in my playing days, I would have had trouble going down at the same time too, because you don't want to do that. But it's a lot easier for me to say it here. That goes out of play. Going back to what we were talking about, Samson having a little trouble, decides to pull it back. Bureau. Gets that contact right there. Does a good job of staying up, but that's where, you know, you know you've been fouled. Maybe go down and you get a penalty kicked opportunity. Guion just can't get it to go in, though. And that's not cheating. That's not anything. You've been fouled. It's gamesmanship. Roth plays this in. Appleback set to throw it in. Actually going the other way. Or now they're gonna give it back and it's gonna be McCaffrey that's gonna throw it in though. Bunch of subs, we'll get you those here in just a second. And number 26, the Valentina of Mascara. Just about 15 minutes left. Mascara, Luckett, and Goyla in for the Paladins. along with Cameron Whitaker, Adrian Fredericks in as well, the sophomore from St. Petersburg, Florida, for the Terriers that kicked away by Sampson. Kelly gets it back to McKenzie. McKenzie just gets it going the other way. Furman's been really strong all night and play out of the back. Does a good job of possessing and working through the defensive shape. Marlott gonna throw it in though here. Bureau. Nice ball played down the line. Guion trying to get there. Just missed on getting past Ben Goff. Keon gives you that burst. Just a little bit of miscommunication. You could actually hear Keon say the right thing, but she played the different ball. One of the great things about being so close with that shot, you get to hear some of that kind of stuff. Omar Elmore and the production crew here at Walford doing a fantastic job. It's Gaither gets this in the middle. Can she get a good enough shot on it? Again, it caroms off a terrier. That final product continues to just made this Furman team just haven't been able to find the back of the net. Doing a little bit of everything good in spurts here tonight. You see almost equal in shot at 13 and 11, but have a two shot advantage over Walford.
just goes over and it'll be a Walford goal kick. Goyla's corner kick just headed high from Gaither. Steiner back in, replacing Bureau for the Terriers in the 79th minute. Walford continuing to hold that two goal advantage, but the foul called here. Plays quick, does Furman. Robertson, not able to get it in the box though. Nice win by Furman, gets it out of Guion. Guion looking for that long ball. Samson will be tested again. Nice job working it around, trying to play from the back. Ross gonna go back to Doth. Nope, thinks better of it. Probably the right decision there. Ball played in the box again. Gaither with a nice run and a nice flick, but goes high. Until she's frustrated. Exactly the ball you want in that situation on that run and that flick. You gotta have a little curve on it so you can flick it yourself to curve it, but just went high. Gaither won that one, but Walford able to keep possession going the other way. Steiner trying to get to the ball. Mapplebeck just puts it out of play. Gaither, Roth right there. Good job. Getting it going the other way, but Steiner can't keep it up there. Steiner putting in the work though, trying to get the ball back. Gaither gets it out wide left. Bullet. All played in. Walford again up to the challenge. Johnson dispossessed. And Guion gets it up to Steiner. Steiner goes out right. Good job. Hold up play. McCaffrey on ball. Gets the ball out wide. Reichenbach goes back to Mapplebeck. Mapplebeck gets it back. Oh, was Fredericks getting it out wide to Reichenbach. Kelly. Right idea, nobody on the run though. But a time waster nevertheless when you're up two goals. Does a good job to get it out. Wide right, McCaffrey get on ball. Steiner trying to get there. It's gonna be a goal kick. Good job by Steiner to try to make something happen. Mia Booker coming back in for the Terriers. One of the goal scorers. Goes out of play. Yeah. 
Furman continues to look for that goal. Mascara. Not the ball she wanted to play. Gonna take a shot right here. It's Furman, but it's gonna go high. Nice idea by Luckett, but if you're Furman, you gotta try to push the ball closer a little bit. In this situation, you know, you got less than seven minutes remaining in the game. The ball went out, actually, said a foul. Either way, it'll be Robertson, a freshman from Greenville. Has had great service all day. Continued there, exactly the player she was looking for. It'll be a goal kick, I mean, excuse me, a corner kick. So another chance here for the Paladins. See the corner kicks right there. Getting near the end in the Wofford Winthrop matchup as well. That one's gonna go in though. Beautiful service. We've been talking about it. It's been there all day for the Paladins. And they're able to find it. That one finally goes in the back of the net after some tremendous service off of the set pieces. Another ball played in right here extremely well by Goyla and Furman able to finish this one off. And we're not done yet, folks. Boyla with the beautiful ball into the box. And it was Gutierrez with the goal on the header for Furman. Third goal of the year for Gutierrez, also has an assist. Eighty-six minutes, under five minutes remaining. Wofford clinging to a two-one advantage. Roth puts that out of play. Furman continues to push the pace, obviously, knowing what's got to happen here. Mascara goes out of play. If you're just tuning in, you got a fun one down the stretch. Wofford started things off with two first half goals. Furman. Trying to change that though here. Furman 5 0 against Walford all time in the postseason, entering tonight. Ball played in, should be able to be picked up. Instead, Doss made sure just to get it out of danger. Kind of in between, in between area, that's one she'll probably watch on film and want to catch but she just wanted to make sure that she got it out of danger. If you don't know, you're taught to just punch it away, and that's what she did. So she did everything right as she saw it, but when she watched it again, she'll realize that she had time to pick it up. Nice ball played in. Roth right there, just gonna get it out of play. This should go off a Furman player, and it does. Give us some more precious time to be able to take it off the clock. Mascara gonna nicely help Walford put the ball back in play. 
Ross gonna take the kick. Two and a half remaining. Gion looking for Booker. Booker falls down, just couldn't get her bearings on that one. Obviously, with the time, getting a little slicker on the pitch. Gion. Two minutes remaining. Gion trying to make sure this is a wall for throwing and take some precious seconds off the clock with under two remaining. Booker and Childress scored in the first half for Walford to give them this advantage. Booker trying to keep this in. Goes out for a corner kick. Or actually, excuse me, goes out for a throw in. Been some really close ones on those today. Referee making sure. Firmin in the right place with about a minute and a half left. And Kelly just wants to take more time off the clock. A tremendous crowd trying to keep Wofford in this game. About a minute to play. By the time she throws this in, Byron Rucker will say one minute remaining, and he does. Wofford trying to keep this advantage. Kelly heads it. Wofford just going to have to get it out of danger, but not fully out yet. Booker gets there. That ball goes out of play for Bullock. And Childress going to make sure that somebody else gets to throw this in. Mapplebeck throws it in. Just about 15 seconds remaining. Furman's mounted a furious late rally. Can they finish it off here in the final seconds? It's gonna be close. That should about do it. And it does in the upstate derby. Wofford picks up his first ever postseason win over the Furman Palette. It's two to one here at Snyder Field and that'll set up a rematch against the team they beat just a few days ago here at Schneider Field in number one Chattanooga. It's number eight Walter.